everyone, Fixer here, and today we're going to jump into Norco, developed by Geography of Robots, published by Raw Fury. It has just come out March 24th. You can get it on Steam for about $13. Uh, it's a bargain at twice the price. It is also available on Game Pass, so if you have Game Pass, you can just hop on into it without paying a, an additional dime, I guess you could say. So there is a, a demo available for this if you want to try it out first, of course. I covered the demo when it came out a while back, I don't know, a year or so ago. And I rather enjoy it. This is a, a point and click adventure, um, Southern Gothic style. This is more Kentucky Route Zero than it is like Monkey Island. And I am ready to jump back into it. All right, let's do this. Norco, Louisiana. Shield hid the stars behind halogen and flame projected onto the sky every night. There was no such thing as silence. The noise never went away. The refinery exhaled an endless sigh. I still can't sleep without that sound. In your dreams, the towers are grand cathedrals, places of worship. The swamps hid behind mirrors like spies. The birds transformed into radiant spheres and traced omens above the highway blight. You spent your adolescence sleepwalking between little devastating rituals. Though Blake pleaded, you decided to leave. I knew he'd get over it, but he never did. He caught out on a grainer to Chicago and onward to the west coast. You never left Louisiana and thought you'd never return. You thought the ghosts of the lowlands wouldn't find you hiding along the road. The, the years carried you through overlit suburbs of the vast American limbo, across mountains above cell towers. Thumbing down 99, you saw an old man crouched in a roadside ditch. He was mouthing your name. He had a familiar gaze. He was gone when you wiped the sleep from your eyes. You spoke to Blake, learning of your mother's declining health, her insomnia, her erratic behavior. You ignored the urgency in your brother's voice. By and by, you made your way east. You threw your phone into the Rio Grande. You joined the armies of the Mesa. For months, you were in the company of fugitives. You slept in nuclear tunnels, repairing engines and weaponry. Albuquerque. The war was a meme that set Albuquerque on fire. You escaped while the foot soldiers of a pop-up junta bloodied the parched land. While hiding in the berth of a freightliner. I slept. You slept easily as the truck shuttled through the plains. Called home from a landline in a motel somewhere beyond Texas. You knew from Blake's hello that your mother was already dead. You hung up, shouldered your bag, returned to the highway. Five years had passed. The ghosts were calling you back home. Act one, Holland Ghosts. Now, I don't know if the demo that I played was all act one or a part of it. You wake from a delirious dream to find yourself in your childhood bedroom. Monkey watches you from the corner. Hello, monkey. All right, so what do we have? A mind map of me? I I look, I look distraught. Oh, there's faint images in the back. Okay, interesting. I don't remember that from the demo. Those are settings. Gotcha. There were some really cool, like, um, font settings. Where was it? Probably the T. Look at this. Different fonts, even one for uh, dyslexia, uh, dyslexia. You can change the spacing and how fast it reads, even the colors. That's pretty awesome. I might have to do that. We'll, we'll see how my eyes handle this. All right. So the way this game plays is you're put in settings and you can observe things. Uh, mostly like a typical point and click adventure. Um, but you don't really have, or at least I don't think you always have, like a character that you can navigate through the scene. It's, it's generally from one standpoint, or sometimes it'll pan, I think, over. 
Cool January air spills through the open window. The low sun watches over the neighborhood. A small flock of blackbirds dissolves into the tree line towards the lake. Commuter traffic glints along Apple Street as a pair of wrens leave out of the weave out of the overgrown lot next door. Monkey, your best friend. A childhood gift. You spoke with him often when things got difficult, but then you left. He sat here for five years, collecting dust. Five years. His eyes filled with anger as he challenges you to return his gaze. Mm -hmm. Serian Contest Part 1. Glyphs. Glyphs will appear and flash a pattern. Match the pattern to meet the monkey's gaze. What do you mean? Was this in the demo? I don't remember this. Ready? Yeah, sure. Wait, what? You successfully meet Monkey's gaze with a cool assurance. However, his expression is unchanged. You stare more intensely. Staring contest part two rings. Circles will appear over Monkey's eyes. An outer ring will shrink to the perimeter of the circle. Click the circle when the outer ring locks into place. I don't like the- that was a gunshot. Anger melts from the monkey's face. Yeah, I'm gonna take the monkey. Drape the monkey over your shoulder. Alright, well I got a monkey. How's my mood about this monkey? What is this? You were traveling through the Midwest. The freight cars rattled in the cold dusk as you crouched on the greener porch. Cell towers peeked over the flat country, translating the notions of the world. The lights of suburban Memphis, the fences, the traffic, the stark shadows under a lavender blanket of clouds. Frayed, tired, silent, and alert at each terminal, you watch the night decay for miles. But then what? You rode in the back of a van wedged between amplifiers from Chicago to Des Moines. You stole a heater from Walmart and brought it to the poorly attended house show. Des Moines to Kansas City, Kansas City to Denver. I don't know what this is, but I'm, I feel like I'm getting sidetracked. Let's let's look at this maybe later. I want to go back to the, the bedroom here. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I don't remember that from the demo. You assume Million has been keeping the plants alive. I guess I assume that. Flyer from a show your friend put on a few weeks before you left town. Fight broke out while one of the opening bands played. Um, I got whipped in the face with a bike chain. You still have a scar above your left eye. After the show, you and Blake shot fireworks from the roof of a hotel on Poydra Street. Sleepless and sober, the two of you walked back to Norco. You watched the sun climb over the green elevators. Among the books on the shelf is a slim volume called Crisis LARPing. The proto-disaster tourism began almost as soon as the floodwaters left. Punks from across the country ventured into the Ninth Ward, Gently, St. Bernard, and finally the East. They curated a, th a theatrical self-portrait of their lives in the ruins. The aesthetics of disaster were central to the emerging milieu. It began to percolate into popular culture. Collapse became the zeitgeist. Wise investors recuperated the experience of disaster, New Orleans became a plastic dystopia, a marketplace for crisis. It's intense. Uh, oh wait, what's this? A sticker from grade school, half peeled from the window. I think, I think that's it. I can head to the living room now. All right. Memories of sleepless nights, the dull refinery hum in the red halogen half darkness. Your mom's sitting here, staring through the window. There's a tension in her demeanor, as if you were interrupting some urgent and obligatory task. You continue to the kitchen with no words exchanged. I thought she hated me. She was thinking about Blue. She barely knew you were there. I wonder if Blue is a shout-out to KRZ. Maybe? The heat of spring will soon arrive, and the mildewed air of the window unit will fill the room. Foot of your mom holding Blake as a baby on a beach in Pensacola, Florida. It's winter. 
You stand beside the um, bundled up and laughing as a gust of wind rakes the beach. Sky is bone might. You peruse the titles on the bookshelf. Oh, good gravy. The western margin of the lake. Many tragedies have come to pass along the western margin of Lake Pontchartrain. The unnamed hurricane of uh, YW9D left the settlements of Frontier and La Branch in a state of unrecognizable destruction. Those who survived did so by clinging to their lives to the limbs of cypress trees. Here's a fun fact. Um, Detroit used to be called Fort Pontchartrain. And the guy who um, settled Detroit, uh, Antoine de la Moth Cadillac, um, was sent from Detroit to settle Louisiana. So um, many of these names from the French and Louisiana um, have like share names of similar towns and villages and whatnot throughout like southeastern Michigan. Um, shares a lot of names like Pontchartrain, although it's no longer called Pontchartrain, of course. The fables and secrets of those communities lie with the bones now scattered in the sediment of the lake. Critiques of deliberate externality. S.H.I.E.L.D. has acquired much of Norco's most flood-resistant land through a variety of mechanisms. But Daria Moore argue that one such mechanism is a process of deliberate externality. This theory posits that key corporate decision makers encourage the company to emit affluent and noxious substances into the environment with the explicit intent intention of decreasing neighboring property values. This compels residents to sell their properties below market value to relocate as quickly as possible. Criticism that this theory often receives is that it diminishes the importance of slavery in situating black residents along industrial fence lines up and down the Mississippi River. In the words of Carter, slavery was a deliberate externality from which S.H.I.E.L.D. continues to profit. Pollution was never needed. Jesus Christ. Fence line diaspora. In the end, we decided to leave dimes. It wasn't the cat cracker or the smells or the fear of our children's health that drove us away, though they played a part. Truth be told, it was the media attention the spokespeople and activists and academics and all this. I was done with it. I was done being a poster child, done being thought of as a victim. I wanted my experience to be my own, not something to gawk at or dissect in a laboratory. Okay. Intense. Your mom's unfolded laundry. She never got to finish. Family photo album. Yellowing pages of disposable photographs. The grandfather or a peculiar look in his face, impossible to read. What was that? Oh, the mind map is updated. Your mom's staring at Blake through the obscure light lighting. He's dressed as a vampire, tugging at someone's waist, pleated khaki shorts. Photo labeled Duck. Scene of a barbecue on the lakefront. The man at the center points playfully at the camera. His face is obscured. Turn the page and there's Blue, your father. Though you've never thought of him that way. His skin stained by the sun. Canister of dip shoved into his front pocket. His easy smile. His knowing eyes. He set the book aside. Alright, so let's look at this mind map and see what's going on here. Your brother. Oh my god, there is a lot. This, That's a lot of information. Blue pops Pierre. Okay, I'm not going to dive into this yet. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go through this a little bit at the end of this episode or maybe at the beginning of the next. I don't want to... I want to focus on the room at hand. An old, defective flat screen that your mom never bothered to bring to the curb. Turn on the television. Chaotic distortion of your mother's memories flash before you. This feels very KRZ-esque. Let's tune in. Oh. Oh, great. Well, this is fun. Lovely. 
Very lovely. Okay. Litter from Shield Oils. It's atop a, a stack of mail. Dear neighbor, please be advised there will be elevated flaring at the site of our number five stack in your good hope on the evening of Thursday, March 19th. This will pose no health risk to residents. This actually happens. See, I'm in I'm in Houston, um, so we've got lots of refineries around us, especially near the, the waters um, along the Gulf. And, and flaring is where, um, I don't know exactly why they flare, but flaring is where they, they set their um, exhausts on, on fire. In fact, it's interesting that this is mentioned now because I think it was just yesterday there was a there was an optical illusion with some flaring that was going along the Gulf Coast that made it look like um, it, the flare was being seen in the sky um, separate from the stacks. So it looked like this really strange orangish red glow in the sky. I don't know if it's due to pollution or we've had these forest fires um, up by Dallas and the wind in the past week has been blowing down towards Houston maybe it, that has caused some of this weird illusions or whatnot but it was all over the news yesterday about these weird f lights in the sky and it, it was just an illusion from some flaring from stacks but anyways if you have any questions or concerns please contact the Shield Norco Office of Community Management Snoke Roger, Roger. All right. I think uh, think front yard time, right? I love I love the style of this game. I don't know. I love I like how dark and brooding it is. Um, and the pixel art is fine as well. I love the pixel art. Three times this house is flooded. Yeah, that happens a lot too. And usually you can see the lines that the water leaves if, if people don't paint over it, which they don't always do. So you can read it almost like a tree at times. The first flood is a shadow of a memory. Placing your feet down on drenched carpet, your mom and grandfather are ripping out sheetrock, sitting in a small RV in the backyard, setting dowels on a cluttered little table. See, and we're pretty much reading it like a tree, right? Uh, with, with trees, you can go to lines and, and, and take a guess on, on when it is and where the, what this tree lived through. And you can identify certain things as well that happened to the tree during certain periods. Um, yeah, this, this is not, not all that much different, is it? You were 14. The pumping station failed during a heavy rain. You were in class watching the clouds move upriver. You got a text message from your mom. Stay in Destrahan. I'll come get you. For two weeks, you shared a hotel room with your mom and Blake. She spent all her days gutting the house in the evenings. You would sometimes help. So I, I've been through my fair share of hurricanes and, and floods. Um, the biggest one being Ike. Um, I was without water for, I think, a week? Or was it two weeks? And without power for three weeks? Or was that also two weeks? I don't know. It was something like that. Um getting a hotel when something like that happens is pretty much impossible they get booked up pretty quickly if you don't book in advance the chance of you getting a hotel during an outage of a hurricane is, is pretty slim you're pretty much stuck in in your home or in someone else's home another pump failure your mom hired contractors with the insurance company she said she was getting too old for it you were bitter you blamed her for not selling the house sooner. And here we go. So I, I don't know if I talked about any of this in the demo. I, I may have. I don't remember. It was so long ago and my memory is poo-poo. So apologies if, if you've heard me talk about this yet. I'm just going to assume you've not seen that demo. So this this captures a, a, a pretty, pretty key element, right? Um, this kid was, what, 14? Or maybe a little bit older than that because 14 during the second flood, right? Was it? And she blamed the mob for not selling the house sooner. But chances are, this house cannot be sold, right? Who's going to want to move into a house that had three floodings in recent history? Absolutely no one. So these people, it's very easy for people from the outside to look at this and say, why don't you just move? Sell your house and get out of there. And it's like, well, you can't. No one wants to buy that house. Sure, you can move, but you're not going to get any money from any sale of the house. It's got to be completely abandoned and, and 
Who's going to do that? It's a lot easy. It's easy to say say that without the full context. And this person being a pretty much kid doesn't understand the full context, as usual. You stayed with friends in New Orleans. Oh, the fourth flood. The fourth flood will follow a slow hurricane and it will be a calamity. Um, I don't know if this is intending to be Katrina, but I'm assuming probably. It will leave the entire region submerged as critical levees breach. There will be a massive blackout that last week's. So yeah, that's that's Katrina. Much of the sewerage infrastructure will be damaged beyond repair. The embattled federal government will do nothing to assist. It will break up, bankrupt the region. Small wilt and enclaves will form along the, the high ground of the Mississippi River. They will take to piracy and hijack commercial shipping vessels. Private mercenary forces will retaliate in kind. Or if it's not talking about Katrina, but maybe I don't ex I don't know what year this is. So maybe there, it's a Katrina similar event in the future. Slowly, industry will flee this hot zone. The old river control structure will collapse from the neglect and sabotage. The Mississippi River will again change its course. Norco, an old abandoned refinery town on a ghost of a river. Your house will be squatted and then raised. Intense. Three crows eye you from the power line. They they do indeed. Hello. Your grandfather's statue of the Virgin Mary sits in the shadows along the crawl space of the house. You observe the weathered concrete and flaking paint of the statue. The face is especially deteriorated, framed by a system of cracks. Oh, that was my only option. See, this is a lot of this, this, um, commentary a lot of a lot of this feels like kentucky route zero doesn't it where you're more forging the story that's what it feels like to me and i like that you run your hands along the deteriorating contours of the statue oh my god it snaps off as if by design behind the statue's face hides an odd assemblage of electronics carelessly soldered together in the center of the electronic configuration is what appears to be a card reader. Do I have a card reader? Or a card? I do not, and I don't think I could shove my monkey in here, right? I don't want to get into a staring contest with a monkey. Okay, well, I need some sort of card reader. Your mom fed the neighborhood strays. They must be hungry since she passed. Okay, uh, I think that is it. We could go to the backyard. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I remember this now. A steel pry bar lies on the ground. Your mom's old four-cylinder 350cc bike it has extensive rust and wear. A disintegrating crab net. Blue taught your mom how to make these, and your mom taught you. In the summers, you'd bite to the suction before sunrise. Tie chicken ne next to the bottom ring of your net. Submerge it. Sit there nursing your coffee while the swamp raised its voice. You come home with a dozen or so crabs snapping and writhing in a burlap bag. You assume your mom hadn't been out on the water much this past year, so it's been unused. This truck was your grandfather's. Remember riding in his lap while you, he let you steer. The dead wafts that collect behind the seats. The smell of grease, whiskey, and nicotine. You and Blake would drive the truck into New Orleans on the weekends. No AC, windows down. The rattling chassis was deafening going 75 on Interstate 10. See, I love... I don't know. I feel like this is a wonderful combination of the visuals... And, and the description of memories past, right? I think it's fantastic. I love it. Million has been slowly repairing the vehicle since your mom's death. This is Million, by the way. We'll talk to them soon. Million sits in her characteristic slouch, lost in thought. 
So Carapace has taken on the rusted and weather-worn quality of the rest of the machinery in the yard. You recall the night that your mom showed up with her. You and Blake stayed up past dawn, poring over pirated API docs. Her ragdoll mass was slumped on the floor as you wrote the rooting procedure. I wonder if such memories hide behind her constellation of eyes. The robot regards you casually. Kay, you're awake. I couldn't sleep. Catherine used to say the sound of the refinery helped pacify you. Perhaps that is no longer true. In any case, I'm certain now is no help. She gestures toward the motorcycle at the edge of the car carport. I was turning over the engine on the bike to test the coils. It's quite noisy, but they're in good shape now. All I need is a fuse and we can use it to get around while I finish repairing the truck. Can I click on this? No. Yes, but not the fuse itself. I heard the phone ringing inside, but I had my hands full. Uh, well, where can I get one? Well, the gas station just up the road has them, but you may have to persuade Troy to let you in. Uh, were you expecting a call? Uh, many people have been calling since Catherine died. The brother is usually the one to answer the phone, but I don't know where he went off to. I wonder where he could be. Oh, well, likely at the bar or the bookstore, if I had to guess. So why is everyone calling? Your mother left behind a lot of loose ends. From what little I know, I gather she was conducting research for a client in Fat City. I sense that many people would like to acquire that data. Is Fat City supposed to be New Orleans? I'm unaware of where she has hidden it. Perhaps Blake knows where its whereabouts. Um, well, who exactly would want to see the data? Your mother spent time, oh, spent her entire life researching this town. She knew histories that others have forgotten. History has a lot of value in this place. Well, who's the client then? Well, I haven't a clue. These aren't things she discussed with me. As the cancer spread, she became more guarded with her research. Uh, she always kept strange company. An occupational hazard, I suppose. So anyways, that's all. Thank you. Let's head into... I don't know how big this house is. I think it might be a little bit large, and, I, and we're running a little long in the episode, so I think I'm going to call it there. I, I will get out episodes when I can. Um, I don't know how often that will be, but I'll do my best, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.